Morning crafters, how are you today? This is Sylvia and I'm going to be, I am submitting a Spark Your Creativity for the Craft Shack for this month of October. And we're just going to do a fun, simple little um, candle holder. That's what I'm going to, I want to make a little candle holder for my um, courtyard table that I have outside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to recycle, you know me, keep it simple, Sylvia. I'm recycling, ta-da, a bag just a paper bag and there's a couple of different ways that you can get the form that you want on this because pumpkins are sort of round most of them are round but they do have other shapes to them and with this bag I'm just gonna you can crumple it like this and you can pretend you're hyperventilating and you can blow into it And you can see that that gives you a nice shape to begin to make your um, candle holder out of, your pumpkin candle holder out of. Or you could stuff it with um, like an old towel or something to give it shape. Or what I'm going to do is everybody knows what these things, the dreaded pink peanuts that go everywhere. Thank God they're in a plastic bag. I'm just going to stuff them inside here. And I'm going to let these give my bag the shape that it needs. Get them all stuffed in. I'm sorry for the noise that this makes. Get them smooshed down, pushed down there. And this is going to give me a cute shape for my pumpkin candle holder. Now you see, it's not quite, you know, it's not round, but what I'm going to do is I am going to be putting like paper mache over the top of this so I can make a container. And I'm just going to use old newspapers, magazines, old pieces of scrap paper that I have, and I'm going to get them applied on here. So I've got everything ready to begin putting the um, paper mache on. I could have done a traditional paper mache which is flour and water and then um, paper and what I did is I tore up a Ikea magazine. Oh, oh gosh I did I did but it's an old one and I have some Liquitex matte gel here and it was real real thick so I just added some water to it and just stirred it all up and blended it in so it wouldn't be quite as thick. Now by using this it's probably going to dry in less than half the time that a regular traditional paper mache would dry because of the flour and water it just takes forever for that stuff to dry. And I'm going to put a layer down first so things can start adhering and then I'm just going to as you can see I'm just going to start slapping the the paper down and in traditional paper mache you don't you want them to be haphazard you don't want them to be like all up and down or all sideways or anything and that's basically for strength putting them on in you know a random pattern helps strengthen the paper mache and I'm gonna have to put on several coats of this because um, I need it f this little pumpkin to be very rigid so I'll get um, my layers done and another thing is I want to apologize for the lighting because I'm shooting this very early in the morning and I apologize for my my voice I have had a cold and allergies and it just wrecking my voice so I, I apologize for that okay so you see what I'm doing here and um, when I get this all done I'll be right back the thing that all pumpkins need is a stem so I'm just going to take some packing paper that came in a package that I got and I'm going to cut a um, tear a strip of it and shape it into a little stem. Keep recycling. And then you just kind of twist it. And the paper mache will help hold this together. Got that off some more okay this will make a good little stem keep twisting it and when I get the paper mache on it it will hold it better so 
we've got the beginnings of a cute little stem here. And I can attach that with the paper mache when I um, put another coat on. Okay. Well, I'm back and I've got um, several coats of the magazine article on it. And what I did then was, you remember this paper that I made the stem out of? I put a layer of that all the way around the pumpkin. And then here's the stem. And now I'm adhering the stem to the top. And I'm just going to keep using these strips of paper. And just keep applying it. So I've got a good coverage for that stem so it that stem so it doesn't come off. I'll just tear some more strips of this stuff. I know that went over here. What I had done with the bottom of that stem is I'd cut it into some strips and kind of flared it out. And that's how I first attached it. And I'll just keep working in this manner till I feel that it's got enough coverage on it where that stem won't pull off by mistake. I think it's starting to shape up pretty good. And then once this dries, I'm going to come back and because um, pumpkins have ridges in them, I'm going to build up some ridges. And I'll probably just use some napkins to do that, to build some ridges in them, in it, after this dries. I think that's on there pretty good, at least for what I'm going to be using it for. I don't see where it was going to come up. Okay, so there we go. We got our beginnings of our cute little pumpkin going here. So I'm going to hang this up to dry. And I'll be back when it's done, and I'll show you how I'm going to put the ridges on. Okay, crafters, um, I'm back. I've got the pumpkin all done. Um, it's ready to be, you know, the finishing touches put on it and stuff. Um, I pulled out all of the, the peanuts that I had. And, you know, whatever you used, if you used a towel or whatever for stuffing with. And then I took my scissors and I just trimmed around the edge to make it nice and flat and to have it look the way that I wanted it to look. And it's just real easy to do. You just take your scissors and just start cutting, you know, like, like, you know, put them in here and just start cutting. It works real easy. And because we did such a, um, a thin layer of paper mache, it cuts real easily. Paper mache, I mean, it cuts real easily. Now what I want to do is I want to put the ridges that pumpkins have on them. So I'm going to use this 3D matte gel from Finnebear, her art basic line. Um, the Craft Shack carries this. And it's nice and thick. I love how thick it is. It's just, it's like a frosting is so thick. And I'm going to lay down where I want my ridges. And then I'm going to come back with um, napkins. You know, these napkins that you get at a drive through And I'm going to recycle these and make my ridges out of them. And I've already got some on the front here, and I'll show you how I did it. It's going to come to the back here, and I'm just going to lay down a little layer of this uh, 3D matte gel. And just get it up here. And then I'm going to take a napkin, and these things are folded like this. But I want it to actually be in a square, so I'm going to open it up and just pull the ends together. And then I'm going to fold it on the diagonal because, you know, on the pumpkin the ridges are thicker in the center than what they are at the edges. And then I'm going to take the inside stuff and I'm just going to start folding it till I get the size of the 
of the um, ridge that I want. And then I'll just lay it down on the pumpkin where I put the 3D matte gel. And then I'll just smooth it down with my fingers. And I'll use the matte gel to help hold it in place. But it's not I'm not too concerned about how it's going down right now because I am going to come back and put a whole nother layer of napkins on top of this, which will hold everything in place. And so then I'm just going to continue with that in this manner. Just lay some matte gel down. It's kind of fun to spread it with your fingers. Once again, get another napkin. Recycle this. Open it up. Fold it. Turn it on the diagonal. And just start folding it in on itself to make the size of the ridge that I want. And then lay it down on the matte gel. And let the 3D matte gel that I've got down on there already kind of hold it in place. Okay, and I'm just going to continue in that manner until I get this all covered the way I want it. It's like finger painting. I love it. <laughs> okay, fold the napkin once again. The reason I'm folding it in on itself like that is so I've got a, a smoother surface on the front. Hold it in place. I'm The parts that are sticking up, I'm just putting some more matte gel down on it. But like I said, it's not going to matter because I'm going to put some, you know, another layer of napkins on top of this. Okay, so I've got it covered the way I want it. And then um, I'll be right back. i got to get some more napkins. So what I'm doing now is I've got all the ridges on, so I want to make sure that they're nice and secure, so I'm putting another layer of a napkin on, and I'm just um, using that Liquitex paste, um, Liquitex matte gel that I thinned out in the very beginning, and I'm taking some torn pieces of a napkin, and I'm laying them down on top, and I want it to be smooth. I don't want it to be um, all gathered up and everything. And then I'm bringing it down to the bottom, and I'm actually wrapping it around on the inside down here. So we can see that. The inside down here, because I want this edge to be fully protected. And then I'm going back over with the matte gel, and I'm just making sure that everything's all smoothed down. Because these napkins are so thin, the gel will go right through and give me a nice adhesion. And then it's making for a smoother surface here. And then I'll put this on right here. And I'll take another piece that I have torn, lay that down, and then tuck it under. And I'm eventually going to cut all that stuff off, but for right now, I just want to make sure the edges are secure. Make this nice and smooth. And tuck it under. And then glue it all down. Now you can see those ridges nicely that we made. And I just need one more little piece. Good. Turn it under. Okay. A 
Okay, now I've got everything sealed. I've got everything covered with uh, the gel. So now all I got to do is just set it aside and let it dry. Okay, um, the pumpkin's mostly dry. It's still a little damp, but it's good enough for painting. Look how cute that looks. You can see the ridges on it now and everything. Isn't that great? I love it. Okay, so I'm just going to just put some orange paint on it. And this is just cheap paint. And it's just an orange paint. I was going to get this painted up. And that's all I'm going to do for right now is just spend my time painting this. I'll get the pumpkin done and the stem. Um, it's not quite as red as what the camera's showing. It is definitely a true orange here. Okay, so when I get this all done painted, I'll be back. The pumpkin is all dry now. It's all painted up. I cut a typical pumpkin face into it. And now I'm going to embellish it. I'm going to bring out the, um, um, you know, the, these ridges that we, we put in the pumpkin. And by doing that, I'm going to mix up some. This is Finnebear's um, Art Ingredients. It's called Art Sugar. And um, this is sold in the Craft Shack. It's a very, very fine, fine, extremely fine type of glitter. And it comes in a lot of different colors. And this one is charcoal. And I thought it'd be great for highlighting those areas. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it with some um, soft gloss gel that I have here. And it, this is also sold in this um, Craft Shack. And I'm just going to put some in here. And then that way I'll be able to just paint it on. And it'll make a, this being the, the gel, it won't um, disguise the glossiness of it. Because gel is transparent and, um, and being gloss, it'll keep the gloss, it's not a matte. So I'm just mixing this up. It sort of looks blue on the screen, but it's not. It's a nice charcoal color. And then I'm just going to paint it lightly down the ridges that we have here. A real cute little glitter, glitter glow to it down the edges down here. I don't know if you can even see it. Um, it'll go on this um, pasty kind of color, but when it dries, it's transparent. I'm just going to paint some down there on each of the sides of the ridges, just maybe to highlight them a little bit. And it's going to be very, very, very subtle because I didn't put a whole lot in this um, gloss gel. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to continue in that fashion. Okay, I have that part done. And you can see the, the glossiness of it. It's still wet. When it dries, it'll have more of a, and this is really not a good picture of it because it just is being reflective, but it has a, a um, muted look to it. And what I thought would be kind of fun to do also on the raised areas is the Craft Shack also sells um, Finnebear's microbeads. And those things are jumping beads. They're so tiny and they're so full of charged of um, electricity and stuff. What I did was I just dumped them into some soft gloss gel and then I used some um, Lindsay Stamp Gang and I used um, an, an orange that they had. I think this is Tiger Lily Orange and I just mixed it in with that so I can put it on top here in a thin layer and it'll have these little glass beads all over it which I thought would be kind of cool. That would be kind of neat to look at and see what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to just spread it out. And we'll see what it's going to look like. And these little tiny, tiny little fine micro beads will be on it. So by the time I'm done, this pumpkin should pretty much be all shiny. Because this is the gloss gel again. And then once again, this will dry clear. Now the Lindy Stamp Gang color in it 
well, you know, colored a little bit, but not a whole lot. You can see it's not really taking on much of a color here. I forget the color beads I used. It might have been copper because I'd gotten some copper beads from the craft shack. But they're so fine. And I'm just going to continue and paint it like this in this manner. Okay, crafters, I pretty much have it done. It's just a little tacky still and needs to dry. Isn't that sweet? Look at that. Isn't that cute? It's all glossy and Put some leaves up on the top. I'll take some pictures. And I'll take a picture at night when it, um, I've got the little um, battery operated tea light in it. Thank you for joining me on this uh, creative little spark here for the craft shack as part of the um, holiday theme for the design team and um, look forward to next week's post where you'll get your another spark of creativity. Bye now.